Something happened to the body of Christ on Friday. When evangelist or sister Osinachi was killed. She didn't die. She was killed. I want to talk to only men this morning. And I know when I talk, they will say, hey, but you, you should talk about the women. No, I will not. It is my, my microphone. I am right here right now. I will talk. You see, uh, men, men, stand up. I want to see, let, let me see your faces. Stand up, stand up. I want to speak all over the world. You people stand up. Even if, if you are by your bed, stand up if you are a man and look at my eye through the TV. Listen, your home is your government. Your home is your government. You are completely in charge of your home. You are not in charge of your home as iron men. You are in charge of your homes as God. When God wanted to show himself to the world, there is no other way he could come into the earth to rule and reign. It would be illegal because he's God and he's a spirit. And so he put you in place to govern for him. To govern for him. You are in your home to show your wife and your children who God is. Period. Anything short of that is you are, you are, you are walking out of purpose. Your purpose as a man as a husband and a father, is to show your children and your wife who God is. That's all. So you, how you treat your family is your own understanding of who God is. When you are sleeping with other women and chatting up other girls and being unfaithful, you are saying that's how God is. But you are a liar. The Bible says, let God be true and all men be liars. When you beat your wife, you are saying God beats. And the Bible says God does no evil. There is no evil with God. And so in the government of God, he is in charge. And all he does for us is goodness. When we sing, we say your mercies are good. Your, your faithfulness is every day and all of that. Don't we sing that? So a man is supposed to be good every day. Supposed to be faithful every day. Supposed to be kind every day. And I know some of you are blessed with such men. When you have a good man, you are in heaven. Any of you looking at me today who has lifted up their hand and hit their wife, go and repent. Go and beg her for forgiveness on your knees because you have lied against God. You have lied against God. I want to charge any man in Lagos, in Ibadan, Akure, Jalingo Mina, all over the world, where you are looking at me from, that you are supposed to represent God. God forbid that you lift up your hand and beat a woman that was, that was not beaten for the past 20 years before she came to your house. She stopped being beaten when she was a baby. That is it, they even beat her. There are many of you standing here, you have never beat your daughter. Never. But you are beating your wife. Did you, do you know that she's somebody else's daughter? I want to charge you by the mercy of God. Those of you who are in this church, Pastor Ina was a good man. Pastor Ina was, Pastor Ina empowered me. Look at me, men. This is what happens when you treat your wife right. Because this Pastor Ina legacy goes on. After, he's been dead now for 19 years. But his legacy continues. His work continues. Because he empowered me. He didn't tell me you're stupid. You are nothing. Shut up. Shut up. Keep quiet. No. My husband, I will make terrible mistakes. He will say, honey, you did well, but don't say that thing like that. Say it this way. Go and tell them. And when you speak, tell them, Pastor Ina said. He empowered me. He allowed me to use his name to become. <laughs> On behalf of your wives this morning, I beg you. I beg you, be kind to your wife. I heard that this man beat his wife. He would beat her and ask the children to join him to beat her. He beat her to a coma until she died. I beg you in the name of the God we serve. Be God to your, to your family. Be the representation of God. I plead with you. 
You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. So this is what this vow means, for better or for worse. In sickness and in health, for richer or poorer. The people who wrote that, those vows were under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They are beautiful vows. But let me explain where the better and for worse is. And I want you to hear it as from the mouth of the senior pastor of Family Worship Center. That the worse does not generate from inside the house. That that words was not mean, did not mean that no matter what I do, no matter what I say in the house, you do it. No, that's not what it meant. It meant that the bad that will come from outside that we cannot control, no matter what it is, we will go through it. But the evil should not gen be generated from within. Therefore, I say, any man beat you, leave. Leave. You say, Pastor, no, that's too radical. I've told you this story before. One day, Pastor and I were married. When we, when we first married, we were quarreling, and I was pregnant with blessing then. We were driving from beauty school. I used to go, I did beauty school, cosmetology. We were fighting. We were arguing in the car. We were so broke, so everything was tight. We used to quarrel over 25 kobo. It was not funny. One of the days on the highway, prr, we borrowed one somebody's beetle. And we were driving past. Oh, he now got angry and hit the car. Boy, it went full. It almost hit the median. I kept quiet because here was I very pregnant. You know what? I kept quiet. He talked, talked, talked. I didn't say a word again because I saw my life was going. <laughs> when we re went home, I cooked. We ate. We slept. The next morning, he went to work. When he came back, he didn't see me. I was gone. You know why your husband has been beating and beating and beating? It's because you have been hiding it. That one time, I left the house. He looked for me for one day, two days, three days. And then he began to pray. And I went and stayed in somebody, his friend's apartment. He didn't think I could ever go there. I went and stayed with the girl for days. And you know what? I exposed him. And when pastor found out, he cried that day because he didn't know that what was happening around him then had entered him. Because you grow up seeing what your father does or uncles and all, and you take it, you think that is the right thing. He didn't know he had that capacity. That was the first time. Another time, we were arguing again, he jacked me up and pulled me. Of course, my mouth runs, you know. <laughs> is there a woman whose mouth doesn't run? <laughs> That's how we were made. We don't have power, but we have a mouth. God gave you power and gave us a mouth. God is a faithful God. He does things in just. He's a God of justice. He put your, He put mouth in my mouth and He put power in your body, so that all the advantage will not be on one side. Imagine if I have the mouth and I have the power, you'll be dead. So I must have said something that got him. He jacked me and put me on the wall, and then in the process he scratched me. Accidentally. When my husband, when the anger finished, you know when your anger is up, your IQ goes down. When the, when the anger finished and he saw the scratch, my husband went down and wept like a baby. And then started working at, on himself. So Pastor Ina did not become a good man overnight. He, he made one, two, three mistakes. And then he said, no, I can't be like this. And he changed. We still quarreled and argued. But it never came like that. A man beat you once, you keep it, he will beat you again. Once you have beaten a woman, you will beat her again. You must look for help. If he looks for help, come back. If he doesn't look for help, go. God forbid you stay in family worship center and be beaten to death in the name of for better, for worse. The worst was not supposed to come from home. The worst was supposed to come from outside things we cannot control. Did you hear me? You say, Pastor, I'm going to stay for the children. No, you're actually hurting the children. You are hurting the children. My sister-in-law said something very strong long ago. She said, when you go before God, like this woman that told everybody, told her friends all her problems, was always said, don't tell anybody. I don't even think they told the pastor. And she died. She committed suicide as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not saying that lightly. Because, I mean, they beat you, they beat you, they beat you. He stops her from meaning. That voice that she is speaking Igbo, she is singing, we don't know, but we are crying along with her. They have robbed us of, a, of something in the body of Christ. 
She didn't leave. So my sister-in-law said, God will ask you, why did I give you legs? Those of you staying in a house and they are beating you upright and inside out. Why are you staying? I will not stay. I didn't stay. Anytime Pastor Ina did, br- br- I left. This was in America, not in Nigeria, where I would gather a crowd for him. <laughs> no, in Nigeria, I would gather a crowd now. You remember when we started family worship center, we were fighting one day. I called the church. I said, we are fighting. No, come and separate us. <laughs> Pastor Usun, uh, what do you want to say? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I can, I can say it stronger than you have said it, but, but I, I personally believe, I personally believe that one of the, is it criteria now or criterion, which of them now, that God will use to judge husbands, that God will use to judge husbands when we get there, I personally believe is that he will judge us how we treat our wives. God was looking for what he will use to explain church. This church that we came to this morning. God was looking for what to use to explain it to us. He didn't know what to use. He said, I will use a husband and a wife to explain church to us. So husband and wife is actually church in the physical because church is spiritual, we couldn't understand. He said, I will use the relationship between a husband and a wife to explain what I mean by the church to us. And so if we come to church and we reverence God and we lift up our eyes and we cry and we shed tears and we fall, that is what he wants in the home. That is what he wants in the home. It's so powerful that God says that the husband and wife are joint heirs of grace joint heirs of grace and jesus is grace it's so powerful in first peter 7 3 that in first peter 3 7 that he says if you don't do this i won't answer your prayers men that is how powerful he is a god that says when you call i will answer suddenly turns around and says, if you live like this i will not answer that is how powerful it is that's how powerful it is and like you said he wants us to be him to the wife and the children and the house helps and the megads and everybody. He wants the man in that house to be him for them to see because many of them will not see him physically. I can't say it better than that. If you notice, I'm not putting condition that if your wife does right, because God loves us whether we do right or wrong. I don't know about you, but I love my children. Nobody who has children loves them because they are good or they are bad. You just love them. Isn't it so? That is how God loves us. And that is why the, the, how the husband must love his wife. If you choose her as your wife, what you are saying is that, Father, this one is the one I want to take care of for you till I come. I will take care of this woman for you till I come. So don't stay in an abusive marriage. Look for help. Come to church, we will help you. Come to church, I will help you. I will use church money to help you. But you will not stay in a man's house to be beaten. Your papa beat you last when you were two, three, four years old. At the age of 25, 30, 40, somebody's beating you. There's no marriage in heaven. There's no marriage in heaven. Being married is not a guarantee. It does not make you any superior than anybody. In fact, he said, if you are out of a marriage, stay unmarried. It's better to be unmarried. I lie down how I want on my bed. I eat what I want. I wear what I want. Nobody's telling me, do me this. I want pound a day. I'm at two o'clock. Stand up. Men, you are peaceful people. Just maintain peace. Give the woman the money. Just indulge. God gives us everything. The Bible says he gives us all things to enjoy. My husband gave me the checkbooks of this church from day one. 
from day one. He said, only you hold the money of this church, you will finish. His trust. Say, you don't know my wife. If you give her the money, let her spend it. As long as she spends it and there is food and everybody is taken care of, it's fine. <laughs> and love is better than hate. Love is more powerful than hate. We will, we will take a moment of silence for Osinachi and for every woman that is being battered around the world. <laughs> 